question. Richard writes, greetings, Clyder crew, and thanks for recommending Edge of Live, Die Tomorrow. Hey, that <laughs> nice. might have worked. Edge, Edge of Live, Die. <laughs> My question is about CGI and how many movies tend to screw it up. I am consistently taken out of, a fantasy, uh, of the fantasy of a movie when CGI backgrounds are in focus when they should not be. I mention this because I just saw a frame of Star Wars with an in-focus Millennium Falcon in the foreground and an in-focus engine from the Star Destroyer on Jakku in the background. Is it just me or does this bother any of you would love to hear your thoughts and may the Schwartz be with you <laughs> no it, it you know and here's why it shouldn't bother you actually is because there is not in in filmmaking and in cinematography there is not one lens that they use that has different depths of field and have certain focus this is the focus point if you have something in the foreground everything in the background is blurred no there are other lenses they can use that perform different functions and do different things. It's up to the cinematographer and to the director about what they feel is important to the shot. What things do they want to draw attention to? What things do they want to be in focus? You'll see some movies where you'll have somebody in the foreground, like me, perfectly in focus, and just five feet behind them, it's all blurred. Like that's the for depth of field that they use. But a lot of times, maybe in a certain cityscape shot, the director will choose that they want that building far in the background to also be in focus and to also be in shot. It's an artistic decision that they make from time to time. So when you're talking about shots like that with the Millennium Falcon flying by the Star Destroyer, and quite often the Millennium Falcon in the foreground is in focus as well as the wreckage of the Star Destroyer in the background being in focus, that wasn't a CGI screw-up. That was an artistic decision made by the cinematographer and the director and the visual effects supervisor. They decided we want attention to be on multiple things at once here, and therefore we want this sort of depth of field to be used. So I don't. it's not a mistake. It's actually just an artistic decision. Schnepp is a guy who's... Uh, a filmmaker, all that kind of stuff. How would you answer that question? Well, <clears throat> what the question is saying is the, the person who's asking the question doesn't like it, is basically what they're saying. They don't like, I want it to look like reality. I want you to be in focus and the background to be blurry. So, But that's just not how movies work. Movies work with like different directors, different cinematographers, different uh, you know people, art directors, different compositors. Sometimes it could be the person who's compositing the Millennium Falcon who adds just a little bit of an extra lens blur, you know, like a motion blur to it that adds that realism. We're like, thanks for adding that. It's a team effort. That you know. That being said, it's like I don't think it's a it's an issue when everything's in focus or out of focus. You're, well, what John just said is is exactly right. It's the decision of the entire team, usually with the director first and then following down in that hierarchy of like how each shot is going to be seen. What you're saying is you don't like it when it's not realistic, like how real people see things. Like I'm, I'm focusing on this, the background should be blurry, but that's not how film is. So, you know, that's just the answer. Mark, are you guys saying the Falcon isn't real? <laughs> <That's true. laughs> is that not, am I learning something? Star Wars <laughs> land would suggest otherwise. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, no, you, you guys make great points. You guys know a lot more about this than I do. I just know when I see a movie, if it looks real or not, that's all I care about. And the trailers from Star Wars look amazing. I feel like I'm in that world. Whereas something like, Gods of Egypt looks atrocious, and that CGI is horrific. So, Richard, if you didn't like the CGI in this, don't watch the Gods of Egypt trailer. You're going to hate it. Mark Ellis, hashtag hate rant. <laughs> you just can't get off the hate rant today. So much but hate rant Let me today. add a little, little extra gelatin to this hate rant. Um, also, another thing I'm guessing from the, the letter was that he, he's also saying, well, I've seen a lot of cheap special effects, mm -hmm. and in that, when you have a lot of cheap special effects, they're being done so quickly that it doesn't matter if the background is blurry and the foreground. So it's like those are the decision making. Pr that decision making process isn't there because the films are just being churned out. But I think with a movie like Star Wars or these bigger budget special effects movies, those decisions are usually thought through. Like le like this shot behind us, we see the Millennium Falcon is blurry as it's banking through some very c clear kind of you know broken down Star Destroyer. So. That's a little extra flavor just to not hate on everything. Hey guys, if you like this clip, click here to watch the entire episode. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel because it'll help you stay up to date with all the stuff we've got going on here at Collider.